There is only one thing on this earth more powerful than evil, and that's us. Hi, I'm Nicholas Brendan, and you're listening to the Buffy Back Issue Ben. Welcome to the Buffy Back Issue Ben, the show where we go through all the Buffy and Angel comics that are canon chronologically. I'm Zach. And I'm Emily. And this week we're not doing that thing I just said that we do. It's just what I say at the beginning of each show. It's to create a sense of familiarity. Thank you for the back in. for the deep look into your intro. Yeah. Nope. Instead, we are doing some stuff that just came out. So, spoiler alert, I guess most of the stuff we cover came out years ago, or at least a you know ways enough that I feel comfortable talking about it freely. But this just came out last week or this week, depending on if you're a Patreon subscriber. Exactly. Um, so brand brand new stuff, except for the free comic book day special, which is also still relatively new. Right, because that was just May 6th, 7th? First weekend of May, whatever that was. First weekend of May. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do, like we just said, the free comic book day special that came out this year, which goes all the way back to season one of Buffy, with the high school years, the stuff we did in episode one, and also talk about the newest original Buffy graphic novel, Parental Parasite. Yes, which is also part of the high school years. Look up front, Parental Parasite isn't out yet. We're pre-recording to make editing that much quicker so this can get out fast. Again, you're giving people a, a deep look inside of our very intricate world of <laughs> podcast recording. This is also the second night in a row we're recording this same aspect because last night's was unusable. Yes. Yes, it was. But let's get started with our free comic book day issue of Buffy the High School Years, which is titled No Need to Fear the Slayers Here. Dumb title. Yeah, it's not great. But this is not half bad for a very short issue that was free. So Yeah. Uh, there you go. All the high school year stuff that's come out so far, this is by far my favorite. As yeah. with one of the other high school year books, this is written by Kel McDonald and art by Yashan Lee. Apologies for pronunciation. So let's get into it. We start off with the same intro that we've gotten in the other two Buffy High School Years graphic novels. And, and I really like it. And the one we got at the beginning of every episode of season one, which was really neat for about three episodes and then really graded on the years. Right. But here it is, just in case you forgot it. Into every generation a slayer is born. One girl in all the world, a chosen one. She alone will wield the strength and skill to fight the vampires, demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the slayer. I like it in this written form, mostly because you can skim over it if you don't want to listen to it again. Also because it's been a while since, you know, the first season of Buffy, the TV show, so... It's been a while since 97. It has. So, let's live in a little bit of nostalgia. Also, these graphic novels have come out far enough apart that I don't feel like it's happening every week, and so I'm stuck with Which So far, intro. considering how much I've, you know, not enjoyed them, probably for the best. I... I'm very optimistic about Parental Parasite. Which we'll review in like 15 minutes. Hope, Stay tuned. I hope it's good. This is going to make listening back to this episode so weird. So weird. I'm so sorry. <laughs> eh, this is a piecemeal episode. But still hopefully a good and entertaining one. Come back next week for more on season 8. There's a giant robot and a racist Dracula. Did you mean season 9? No, because for release this comes out. Oh. In the middle of season eight. Whoa. We're recording season nine now, but when this comes out, it's season eight. That's so weird. Yeah, next episode, Buffy fights Twilight for the first time, and again, racist Dracula and a giant robot. Right. Have fun with that one. Also, that, that one episode, was fun. I liked that. That episode's also titled Racist Dracula. Well, there you go. As it should be. Back to our free comic book day issue. Buffy is fighting some vampires in a cemetery. As you do. In the rain. As you also do. Yeah, I guess. And she stakes one of them, the one wearing a Hellboy shirt and the one wearing an alien shirt, gets away. Because Buffy slips on a puddle and she gives herself a 4 out of 10 for the heroic score because it was kind of clumsy. Yeah. And also she was too busy punning because it's the middle of the rain. She stakes a vampire. She's like, oh, your friend's all washed up. And then the other vampire <laughs> just away. ran away. He's like, bad pun. Yeah. Yeah. Not great. So next day in downtown Sunnydale, 
Probably in that one street. Yeah, probably. That one set they had. It's kind of like Hollowell, Maine. Oh, God, it is. You're thinking a 1990s TV show. Where your local comic book store, The Editor's Note, is... Comics? The Editor's Note Comics is located. And Xander is bringing Buffy around to the local comic book store. Just like yours. On the one street. Just like yours. And they go to Capes R Us. Not a copyright infringement because the R isn't facing backwards, I guess. And because it's, I don't know, in a free publication? Yeah, why not? And Buffy's lamenting (laughs) that she didn't kill the vampire, and Xander's like, meh, no worries, you'll get him eventually. Well, we also have in the window of this comic book store, because this is a Dark Horse book, some Dark Horse books in poster form. How weird is that? There's the Predator, there's Hellboy, looking all boyish (laughs) and two posters for serenity which wouldn't come out for you know eight more years as it is like your favorite property ever i feel like you're gonna forgive a little bit of incongruity yeah whatever it's fine so they wander around the comic book store and xander's like look i think you should try and find something that you like x-men are always good except it's the late 90s so you know what x-men are no good you know what's good right now Nothing. It's the late 90s in comics. It's all bad. Was Batman good? No. Not even Batman? No, it was all bad. Oh, well, you know. But the fun little in that I learned is that Xander's talking to Buffy and he goes, The X-Men are always great and you'd probably like the character Shadow Cat. The X-Men in the 90s are responsible for the comic book market crash that's still affecting me to this day, so boo, 90s X-Men. Okay, so we're a little bitter about that, but who's Shadow Cat? Kitty Pride, Ariel, Sprite, many names, the character that Buffy is actually based off of. Ha! So now we're all in the inside joke here. (laughs) Ha ha ha. And Buffy flips through her X-Men comic magazine, not caring because it's the late 90s and it's crap. But then there's this little girl with pink hair who needs some help and Buffy goes over to help her and says that she wants Sailor Moon, the pink one. I know nothing about Sailor Moon. I don't either. But evidently, she's the coolest, and she fights evil by moonlight. That's what little pink-haired girl tells us. Later on, Buffy's gonna fight things by twilight. Weird. As in next episode? Yes. Weird. Much like (laughs) those Serenity posters are eight years too early, we're also enjoying some time travel in this show. So, here is by far the most unrealistic part of this whole comic to me. Um, Xander's standing here with some comics at the cash register, and he goes, Hello, anyone around? I have money to give you in exchange for comics. No proprietor would allow this. No local comic book store owner. Especially in the late 90s when sales were in a free fall. If someone has money, you take the money. You do that now. Look, it's still a low profit margin. You take the money. Yes, exactly. And then this book takes a very dark turn. Something very personal and close to my heart. Xander opens the door and sees that same vampire from the cemetery, the one who got away, choking the comic book store owner. Because it turns out that when this vampire died, the comic book store owner got rid of his pull list. And you know what, buddy? That's on you. You pick up your pull list in a timely fashion. This brave soul is ordering books for you months in advance because that's just how diamond solicitations work, and you don't have the gall to pick it up, and you're blaming him? Because you're too much of a deadbeat to come actually buy your stuff? You know what? No. Did you make that pun because he's actually dead? Yes, I did. Thank you for picking up on it. <laughs> but You, sir, are in the wrong. Vampires were evil before. They have never been this evil. <laughs> Just in case we're all missing the point here, the moral of this comic is... Pick up your comics! And yes. also, if you don't want to pick up a comic anymore, just buy it for another two months because, you know, the store owners have to pay for... An expectation that you were going to buy that. Anyway. Do him a solid. Anyway, Xander is a little shocked at this moment and he yells to Buffy, says, we got evil. Yes, you do, sir. This man did not pick up his pull list. He died also. Excuses. Okay. So Buffy goes in and blah, 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 beats up the vampire. She's like, pick up your pull list. Not st- quite. <laughs> she doesn't really him. say that. She actually doesn't say anything to him. Yeah, she's usually punnier than this. Well, I guess she said, you know when they say the customer is always right? I don't think they mean this. No. Or was that Xander? 
It's Buffy, because then he's like, Slayer, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah. And so then she tries to stake him, misses his heart, gets him in the shoulder, but th- Buffy doesn't let that stop her. She grabs him by the hood and throws him outside in the sunshine. And but he goes, she... paft. But she knocks over a bunch of long boxes in the process. She doesn't know what's in there. It could be valuable books. By Buffy's recklessness, she has decreased the value of all of those books. Yes. They also are short boxes, and hopefully they were not that important. And once the vampire is thrown out of the door that, you know, this brave store owner is now going to have to clean, he burns up in the sunlight. Little pink-haired girl is like, what just happened? And Xander's like, no worries, that monster's gone now. Buffy fights them all the time, but keep it on the down low. And then he also adds, this is what happens when you don't pick up your publicist. He doesn't add that. He does not add that. He does not try to scare the poor child. But it is an odd moment that he's like, yeah, she fights monsters, but don't tell anyone, little girl, that I just met. Because it's still season one and this is still a super secret. Yeah. And Buffy picks up some of the comics that she knocked over. I really hope she re-alphabetized them because, you know what, I assume Buffy has no respect for the alphabet. Respect the the alphabet. Come on. And the book ends with the little girl saying, why didn't you tell me superheroes were real, mom? It's pretty cute. I do like this one. Yeah. Would it be because it has something to do with your general livelihood? No, it's just, it doesn't contradict anything as these other ones have. It's light. It's just telling a nice story. I actually like that it adds to Xander's comiciness because that comes up a lot more in like season eight and season nine. Yeah, we don't than, see a lot of it, it does in season in the one. Movie. In the movie. In the movie. In the Xander TV is shows. Not in the movie. In the TV shows. Yeah, I don't think we really see it until like until season he, two. Yeah, season three a little bit more, but. But even so, like it's still not at the forefront of, like when I think of Xander, I don't think definitely into comics. Do you? Well, he should definitely increase his polo subscription. Yes, in 1997, that fictional character should increase his pull list. I mean, not in the nine, late 90s. Well, probably to help, you know, the market from going under. I mean, the year before Marvel filed for bankruptcy. Also, Amalgam Comics happened. Boo! Boo! Look at what I learned from I, reading your writing. God, I can't get away from Amalgam. <laughs> They're now the bane of my existence. In any case, that kind of wraps up this one, so... Yeah, and I know, I think back in episode one, when we first covered the high school year stuff, I said, like, don't go back unless there's a story worth telling. This one isn't really worth telling, but it's generally non-offensive, and it's light, and it's kind of fun, so... It adds a little bit. And for the price of free, good. Yeah. And so we move on to Parental Parasite, the newest chapter in the Buffy high school years. Very exciting. We liked the last one return to form on this yeah so this one is kind of along the same lines of the other buffy the high school years stories they're very pointless well i'm just gonna try to come up with a nicer word uh they're very day in the life of but unfortunately we got a fair number of those episodes in the first couple seasons of buffy like i don't feel like i need to relive what their everyday high school experience was like And if you want to know the entire plot, if you just read the description on the back, it literally says everything with the exception of one more sentence than where they just say, and Buffy wins. So once again, this is written by Kel McDonald with art by Yashan Lee. And something that this does do that kind of, I'm not going to say excites me, because excites is too strong of a word. Intrigues? Gives this show meaning. I can finally place where these are supposed to happen in continuity. Yay! So we're not going to get into why it is until about halfway through it, but these Buffy the High School Year books have to take place after episode six, when Principal Flutie is eaten by the hyena kids, and before episode seven, Angel, when Buffy finds out that Angel is a vampire. Yes. Because we don't know about that yet in this book. So we open up this sack of crap, once again with the into every generation the Slayer is born, yada yada, we've heard that bit already this episode. Again, I still liked it. Yeah, it's not bad, and something we haven't really talked about with these books, at least for this one, this is the only page that has some slight attempt at an interesting page layout. The rest of them are all really dull, very paint-by-numbers, a lot of, like, your, you know, four-panel pages. Some pages go crazy and have five. This one has five. It's very uninspired for the most part. But Buffy and Angel are down in the sewers fighting off demons. Because, you know, of all the times that they've done that up until this point of the show. 
or, you know, none. Right. We'll get into this a little more later, but I was saying to you earlier today that the Buffy universe, which is fine. It's there's nothing wrong show. with that. Yeah, there's it's literally this show. But it would be very hard to write for them. I think this was just a mistake. I agree. This book is a mistake. I really meant just that little moment. Oh, but no, these are not worth picking up. Don't bother. Let's be upfront about that. So anyway, Buffy and Angel are fighting in the sewers. They're fighting these random demons. Buffy mentions that, oh, good, they killed these demons, but at least her clothes didn't get too dirty. That, you know, leather jackets are cool, but she can't really have that buttoned up all day. And that she loves the leather jacket that Angel gave her. That's nice. Nice is an interesting word for it. So they barely know each other yet. They're not dating. As far as Buffy knows, Angel's just a 28-year-old guy. And he's buying her expensive clothing. Angel's a sugar daddy. Angel's not a sugar daddy. This goes back to my statement where I wouldn't want to write for Buffy fans because this was again... Because Angel's a sexual predator? A mistake. And he's grooming her? He's not a sexual predator. He he's absolutely not grooming is. Her, but it but, comes off as super creepy because you know, it's Buffy's too early in their relationship. She's not into that. Apparently she is. She's, She's blushing really about her new jacket. She's not into that. Sugar daddy buying her nice things. You're so creepy. And she doesn't have to reciprocate at all, so it's not prostitution. You're so creepy. I didn't write this. Yeah, but you read that into it. Yeah, because it's on the page. Yeah, that was not the impression I got when I read it. Although, I frequently forget that Angel's 28 and she's 16. Well, he's a lot older than that, but... Right. Physically, and she doesn't know any difference, so he's just a... Random 28-year-old who's hanging out with her? Yeah, he's a dude that she literally just watched stab a demon through the stomach with a broadsword. Where do she... they get their broadswords? Broadswords are us. Right. Buffy goes back to class and Angel stays in the sewers to go hunt these demons. Not letting Buffy know there's a reason he can't go out into the daylight. Yeah, that's right. See, that's the weirdest part, is that the Angel buying Buffy a jacket thing, a couple episodes later when they're actually dating, wouldn't be that weird. But right now, they're just hanging out. They're and... not even hanging out at this point, really. Angel just shows up from time to time and Buffy yells at him. She's like, stop being creepy in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, that's really all they do right now. He shows up, gives some exposition necessary for the plot, and then he goes away. Yeah. I don't know, I'm trying to make this nicer than it is. You can't, it's weird and creepy. But... Joyce gets a call and at the gallery. Yeah, here's something that's interesting. This is the first and only time we've ever seen Joyce's gallery that she runs. Yeah. It's always vaguely mentioned, never well defined, but we see Joyce setting up the gallery, which is still at this point mostly an empty office space. Right, but it's kind of cool that we see Joyce in her element, and this issue gives Joyce a little bit more personality than the first couple episodes do. Joyce goes to, I guess, pick up Buffy from school for skipping. Which seems ironic to go take your child out of school because they skipped school. Yeah, why not? And Joyce berates Buffy that she keeps skipping school and that she's going to have the same problem she had at the old school and she's going to burn down the gym again. She doesn't say that, but she should have. <laughs> and Joyce decides that she's going to become a more involved parent and she's going to kind of helicopter parent Buffy. Yeah. And Buffy is thrilled about this. As every child is, I'm sure, at that moment. Meanwhile, we cut to a dark alley where this woman is being led by a child. And the child is saying, come on, the yeah. candy store is going to close soon. Yeah, what kind of candy store is open in the middle of the night? Maybe it's not the middle of the night. Maybe it's only open till like six, but it's the middle of winter. No, this is dead night. There are stars out. No. Oh, I tried. Yeah. Stop trying to defend these books. I'm trying. And a vampire comes up behind the woman and kills her saying that he could use something sweet too and then he goes to bite the little girl and he's like come on it's way more fun when you actually do something like scream he also says don't wet yourself no this is no fun if you don't scream or wet yourself oh so he wants her to wet herself sorry that's weirder than i thought it was yeah yeah damn this book <laughs> this is not a good book but then we're into sugar daddies and child urination the little kid's eyes flash and she goes take care of me and we see the vampire turn from vamp face back into human face and goes okay and she continues on to the candy store with a vampire in tow now the next day at sunnydale high school in the library as you do and we get a plot point that goes nowhere giles is questioning buffy to make sure there weren't more demons that and she's like no there were only three of them and giles is like hmm are you sure yeah. Like, ooh, we're setting something up. No, we're not going I know, nowhere. I kept waiting for that to come back. It didn't. 
And Buffy says that Angel's out looking for more. And Xander, because we don't know he's a vampire yet, he's like, what's Angel doing there? Doesn't that guy have a job? Not for a few years. He's not quite up to helping the helpless. He's more... Just hanging out in graveyards? Yeah, mostly. But the thing that this brought up for me is how did he have enough money to buy Buffy a leather jacket? Or pay rent. Or buy his own leather jackets. Or mass amounts of hair gel. Or all those rings he had in the early days. Yeah. Where does Angel's money come from? They should write a Buffy the High School Years book about where all of Angel's money comes from. That would actually be an interesting one. We just follow Angel around and see him like... Does he return a lot of bottles? Like watching Buffy from afar. Where does he get the money? Also, when does he go buy these things if he can't go out in the daylight? Well, we've already established that Sunnydale has apparently late night stores open. Yeah. But that's such a more interesting question. Why don't they answer that question? Because they're too concerned with children wetting themselves. Yeah. And Buffy's complaining that Joyce is going to you know, let's just go back to the term helicopter parent her. And she's like, how am I going to slay all these demons and have a social life if my mom's around all the time? Ugh. So, of course, Joyce walks into the library. Yeah. And Buffy is astounded by this. And Buffy's like, Mom, we're going to have this plot point in later episodes. Don't ruin it now. Because, <laughs> you know, this never happens again. No. Except for that time that it happened. Yeah. Or Joyce goes into the library. She's like, oh, I just wanted to see where you were. All that crap. And hey, she does the exact same thing here. But luckily Willow scares her off, or rather convinces her that they're off to go to Xander's house to finish a biology project. So Buffy's mom leaves and says, I'll see you at home for dinner. And Buffy's like, yeah, this is going to be a lot of work. And Willow's clearly covering for Buffy. Like, this is a lie that there's a biology project at Xander's. And... Before we turn the page, I assume, okay, they're going to go off on some kind of crazy adventure and Buffy's going to get in trouble and come home late. Except Joyce is like, come home for dinner. And Buffy's like, oh no, I have to go to Xander's. We turn the page and Buffy is going home for dinner. Yep. That sure went places. Yeah. This story isn't even structurally good, let alone it's weird sex stuff. But don't buy this. Buffy goes home for dinner. Where Joyce has prepared a fine roast. Yeah, and she's gone all out to give Buffy a nice meal so that they can have a nice meal together and then have a movie night. I think that sounds awesome. Yeah, but what... If I came home and somebody had cooked me dinner, I'd be so excited. Wow, you are staring right at me. Well, frequently I come home before you, so... Yeah, it's not my fault. Not your fault. And what a punishment this is. Buffy skips school multiple times in a month and Joyce is like, here's a roast. But I think the real secret to this is in the art. Because we see that Joyce has poured herself a glass of wine. We don't know how many glasses deep Joyce is in. But we respect that choice. I feel like Joyce got drunk and made a roast. Good job, Joyce. (laughs) And then Buffy and Joyce watch a movie together. And Buffy sneaks out to go hang out with this 28-year-old. Again, we don't know his vampire yet, so we can just assume that that's what Buffy thinks too. In a graveyard. Because that's normal. Yep. They keep also saying Slayer status. Like her Facebook status. From back in the day, except Facebook didn't exist at this point. But still, Slayer status. Feeling guilty. It's an odd little trope. Yeah. And Angel's like, you know what? This sounds fine. Your mom just wants to spend time with you. Just enjoy the time you do have with her. Uh, Weird premonition book. Does Joyce die in like four years? I don't know. Does she? You don't like that episode. It was very traumatic for me. You can't even appreciate it from a technical level. That episode is No, I didn't appreciate anything about it. But it's a weird comment to make to a high school girl about her healthy, early 40s mom. Yeah. Just enjoy the time. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can say that because Angel's like a million billion years old that and he's seen. And killed his dad. Yeah. That he's seen a lot of people die. And so you could say that. I don't even know. Nope. I can't make an excuse for that one either. That's just a weird <laughs> premonition keep, keep of trying. Joyce's death. But. Buffy mentions that they're going to have a spa day tomorrow. And somehow she's complaining about Joyce throwing a lot of money at her. That sounds lovely. I would totally participate in this with Joyce. I will go instead of Buffy. But Buffy's like complaining about it. And she's like, I don't know how I have time to go beat the demons and also go hang out with my mom. Blah, blah, blah. Except. (laughs) Sneak off with you. Except, yeah, that she keeps making choices like. But she's not going to tell Giles and the gang about 
what they're doing in the graveyard until the next day at school. So clearly nothing is that much of an emergency. Get yeah. a manicure. Buffy's, Enjoy it. Yeah, at this point, we haven't seen any evidence that anything that Buffy is doing is actually super... Important? Necessary. Yeah. The, Urgent? The back of the book will tell us that there's been a surge of demon activity. No actual proof of that within the text itself. Right. But Buffy and Angel come upon the little girl and the vampire that she's leading around. And Buffy kicks him in the back of the head and says, Aren't you too old for a kid's meal? You know what? We could say that about Angel, too. Creepy. Yeah. While Buffy's about to go stake the vampire, Angel's talking to the little girl, and she starts to scream that she wants to go home, and her eyes flash red again, and the vampire, like, breaks away from Buffy and picks up the little girl and runs. Where's home, by the way? I don't know. I don't either. And Angel says, wait, that kid is a cuckolitis demon. Hmm. I don't know why he just didn't go try and kill the damn thing if he knows what it is. Right, because it's not that complicated. Yeah. Kill the demon, kill the vampire, it's all fine. Yeah. But next day at the library, we discuss this whole thing. And Buffy misses her manicure for this. I would, honestly, this is like a three second conversation. Call them up on the phone in the morning and then go to your manicure. Also, Joyce is going to let her go to school again so she can go get a manicure. Yeah, I mean, they're all in school hours. So is this a Saturday that they all went to the library? I don't know. Use the phone. Send a carrier pigeon. And Giles shows them an image of what this demon is. It takes the form of human children and makes adults do what it wants. It takes care of them. And then Giles is like, you just have to cut its head off. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but first he has a spell to turn it back into its ugly normal form so that you don't look like you're cutting the head off a child does i mean once we find out what happens to the body though does it matter i don't think so i just the trauma of cutting the head off of a child look spoilers buffy actually kills this thing i know shocker but this thing turns into dust like a vampire so just hack its head off and it will turn into dust yeah it's not like you then have to dispose of the body of a dead child it's dust it's fine if you already know it's a demon it doesn't matter let's waste time though okay so then they argue about where they're going to find it. Then they're like, well, maybe Angel will know. And Buffy's like, I don't know where Angel is. He never comes out in the sunlight. Meanwhile, Joyce is waiting for her manicure and Buffy has missed it. Well, she's waiting for her manicure at Pretty Nails. Mm. Which is conveniently next to a little dark alley. Look, I've seen enough nail salons in Philly where I'm convinced they're all money laundering organizations. Yeah. I feel like that's what Pretty Nails is as well. Probably. And in this dark alley, we see the little girl emerge from a sewer crate, saying that she wants to see a movie. Tells the vampire to come on, who immediately bursts into flame. And Joyce hears the pfft of the vampire turning into ash. So she goes, the little girl, is everything okay? And the little girl turns to Joyce, turns on her scary, glowy eyes, and says, take care of me. So Joyce automatically starts to take care of her. Buffy returns home late at night. It's completely pitch dark. She's like, sorry, I missed our manicure thing. I'm only like 10 hours late for it. Also, if I were Joyce, I would be very concerned about Buffy's safety at that point. I mean, I understand that Joyce is like held captive by a demon right now, but like clearly this is not the first time that Buffy has done this. Yeah. And Buffy comes home to find that Joyce is baking for this little girl and making her hot chocolate. And Joyce dismisses Buffy. She's like, go away. I need to take care of the little girl. We never even get the little girl's name. She's a cucklitus demon, obviously. Yeah, but don't you want her to have a name? No, I just want this to be over. So Buffy uses the phone this time, because it's an emergency. Oh, yeah. And she calls the gang together. They come over to her house. Jazz is like, I got the stuff. I'll be right there. And so Buffy then has the task of making sure that Joyce and the little girl don't kill themselves. Yeah. While they wait for Buffy's friends to come over. The little girl says, let's get some candy, and Joyce walks her out to go get the candy going, you know, in a straight line from point A to point B, which includes not looking both ways in the street. Come on, Joyce, protect the child. So Buffy runs and throws them out of danger from a car. Yeah, um, Joyce face plants on a sidewalk and reveals that Joyce is wearing a uh, short dress. No one else noticed that. She's like an inch and a half away from showing butt cheek. Anyway. She's a drawing, so she's fine. She does have slender legs. Just turn the page. But Buffy picks up this little girl, runs inside, and locks the door to leave Joyce on the outside, banging away. And so Joyce is freaking out. 
Buffy is with the little girl on the inside, but the little girl has started to transform into her normal self, kind of. For some reason. She's turned green and her face is elongating and... Yeah, she's turning back into the demon. Uh, yes. For an unexplained reason, because we're supposed to need a spell for that. I thought that 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 meant that Giles was doing this spell, like, in the car on the way over. <laughs> no, no, Giles is driving. No. We'll get here in just a minute, but Giles will soon do the spell. But, points for continuity, they have Giles' old little English car that he had. That's true. Until it got crashed in season four. Yep. So, you know, credit where credit's due. And Giles is like, Miss Summers, you're hurting yourself. And gets between Joyce at the door and Joyce just clocks him in the face. Yep. And so Xander and Willow then have to try to control Joyce yep. while Giles does the spell. Xander restrains her while 100% copping a feel. He du- Come on, look at that. No, he's <laughs> not. He definitely is. He's not. And hey, we already found out at the season four finale when they all go into their dreams and restless that Xander has sex fantasies about Joyce. And Giles performs a spell, which I'm going to say is accurate-ish to his skills at the time. At least he's using a book to cast a spell and he's not just shooting lasers out of his hands and stuff like that as he will in the future. Yeah, but this spell does the final work of transforming the demon totally into its demon self. I don't know what the difference is. Why not just kill it when it's halfway there? I don't know. Unexplained. Buffy catches it before it can jump out her window. Has the terrible line of, time to put you to bed, as she throws it on her bed. Well, she also hits it with a pillow. Yeah. You know, the most aggressive of weapons. Yeah. Pillow fight. Then she goes to her chest of weapons, grabs a handy hatchet, and chops the thing's head off. And it turns to dust. So, could have done that a long time ago. Yep. Choice passes out for some reason, so we can wrap the story up, I guess. Slayer status, so relieved. <sighs> and Buffy brings Joyce breakfast in bed. And Joyce is like, I don't remember anything. Convenient for the plot. And Buffy's like, oh, you had a heat stroke. Yeah. And now you have to lay in bed, and Joyce is like, it's weird how I don't remember it being warm. It was kind of cold yesterday, like I had a jacket and everything. And Buffy's like, don't worry about it, Mom. These aren't getting be, better. I wanted this to be good. So did I, because the free comic book day one was fine. I guess I just wanted it to further something. I guess the closest thing is it furthers Joyce a little bit. I like seeing the gallery. I like kind of seeing things from her perspective. That's the only thing that you could say. It. I like seeing things from her perspective, but... The gallery is the only addition to this. It's not my favorite one. No. None of them are my favorite ones. This is actively bad. And I don't get why they're not trying to adhere, because I know I'm pointing out some of the continuity stuff. Why aren't you adhering more to this? You're not picking up new readers with this material. People aren't going to go like, oh, you know what? Last 20 years, I haven't checked out Buffy. Now is the time. I don't know. I guess still, I there are plenty of unanswered questions from the first couple seasons during the high school years. Answer those questions. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of room to do stuff. You can do stuff with Giles. You can do stuff with literally anyone else's family. I mean, we didn't even meet Xander's family until season six. Show something with that. Or even Willow's family. We don't know a lot about her. Or even like Cordelia her life. changes so much during the Angel years. Well, we also... Show a little bit of her... Actually, yeah, that'd be great. depth during high school years. Because Cordelia is never front and center. Everyone else is. Like, they all get at least something, but... Yeah, those first couple of years, Cordelia really gets nothing in the way of backstory. She's like, I have a rich family. We lost all of our money because of tax evasion. Right. And that's about it. Right. And then she has such a dramatic character change that it wouldn't be weird to have a little bit of that happen Yeah, I mean, the only time we see Cordelia's family is literally in a photo that she printed out. It's the only time we see Cordelia's family. There could be a story to tell there. There's nothing to tell in this. No. Nope. Or, Joyce gets her mind taken over by a demon. Haven't done that story. I mean, Angel has his own stuff, but even there's a ton of Angel's yeah. backstory that yeah. we don't get. Or at least what he was doing this time, because a lot of what he's doing is just standing in the corner being creepy. Right, so where does he get his money from? That's a real question. Where does he get his information? Yeah. You could do stuff with what this. What other friends does he have in the area? Because he doesn't he... seem to know anybody until he meets Buffy. And then he's like, just kidding, I know all these other underground contacts. There's stuff he could do. Yeah, and this is not it. So I said it before. I think we even said it in this episode. Don't go back unless there's a story to tell, and there's no story to tell here. So general review. Don't. Just don't. General review. 
in my opinion, is go read some of the stuff after the show. Ends. Don't read this. Yeah. There's... Go rewatch the first season if you want to. Except for that I Robot You Jane episode. Don't go back to that one. I remember it took us like weeks and weeks to get through that episode. Because I didn't want to watch it? Yeah. It's no good. <laughs> I heard that. You made me start Breaking Bad because it was so bad. Watched a whole other show in between episodes. I don't think we watched a whole show, but we definitely made it deep into Breaking Bad because you didn't want to watch that one Buffy episode. I know. That's always what happens. Tame the completest nature of this show. So, moral of the story. Dark Horse, you do a lot of good. This isn't it. Yes. Succinctly, yes. But we'll be back next week to get back into season eight. And... Yes, we will. As of right now, no more of these have been announced. Hopefully we won't be taking any more detours because I don't really want to read any more of these or spend money on them. It was short. Thank God. But we'll be back next week for more of Season 8. Sounds like a plan. But if you want to find the show, you can head over to editorsnotecomics.com. It can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you'd like to get the show a week early, you can head over to patreon.com slash editorsnotecomics. One dollar a month will get you this show every single week. Plus my other show, the Editor's Note Comics Podcast, a weekly news and whatever I feel like talking about show. With Jared, not me. Get you that a day early. And if you could rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, go check us out on YouTube and other podcasting platforms. Or send us an email, too. Say hi to us. Or tell your friends. Also do that. Share. I guess. It's fine. Sharing is caring. It can be fun. Mm. It's a Barney song. Do you not remember that? No. Oh, well. You learned new things today. My old man said um, my fascination with Barney as a child was graciously brief. Well, there you go. Yeah, we'll be back. Bye.